what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial in today's video we're going to be looking at how you can put buttons in your table view cell and more importantly how you can use protocols to delegate the functionality of when a user taps a button to the view controller so we're going to be actually implementing this of course and it's a super important concept uh, to build out really foundation uh, table view cells and experiences. So that being said, drop a like down below, subscribe if you're new, get Xcode ready, and let's jump right into it. So let's get started by creating a new project. We'll stick with the single view application and let's call this button in cell, save it on our desktop, and let's get into it. So first things first, we need to set up a table view. And of course, then we can actually create a cell and put a button in it and talk about the core of this video. So let's create an outlet in our view controller for a UI table view, like so. And we're gonna set up its data source to be self. Let's say UI table view data source up here. We're going to say number of rows is going to be data.count. Of course, we need to define data, which will be an array of strings. And then we also need cell for row. And let's see, looks like I typed this in incorrectly. This should be number of rows. That's what we want. Um, and then we want cell for row. And in here we can DQ a cell with an identifier of cell for index path, like so. And before we return the cell, we're going to say cell dot text label dot text equals that item in the data array. And then let's return the actual cell. So before we run this, we need to actually connect our outlet on our storyboard. And we also want to register a basic UI table view cell for the cell identifier. So now that we have that done, let's go to our storyboard. And here we can look for a UI table view, drag it on in. So right click this and connect the table to this table outlet. Let's connect the table, rather let's select the table and add some constraints from this menu down here. We'll select zero all the way around, hit command R to build and run. And we should see a table view with our two cells for the strings that we entered. Okay, cool. So now we wanna add a button to our cells and to do that, of course, we need a custom cell, and then we're gonna hook up the button uh, actual tapping action to the proper design um, to get that value out. So to create a custom cell, we're gonna right click this, hit new file, Cocoa Touch class, and we want a sub view of a UI table view cell. We'll just call this my table view cell. Make sure to check this box to create an XIB file for the cell. And here, let's do some basic setup. So firstly, we want to get rid of this. And we will create a static identifier with the name of this class. And then we'll also create a static function called nib, which returns a nib. And we're going to use this basically to set up our table view, similar to my other videos. And most importantly, the actual core of this video, we wanna create a IB action um, for a button. So did tap button. And we also wanna create an IB outlet. And we wanna say, this is a button. And let's create finally a function called configure with title. And we're simply gonna say button set title title normal 
And let's see, what else do we want? Let's come into here and say button, set title color to link normal. Let's go to the XIB file and add a button. So in here, let's first actually set the identifier. So open up the attributes inspector and paste in that identifier that we're using. And let's expand the cell a little bit. Find a UI button, drag it on in. We're gonna set up some constraints. So we're gonna say um, zero, 10, um, 100, zero, and let's see, do we need a height or width? We actually don't. So that should be sufficient. Let's connect our button outlet to our button and our IB action to our button. Let's now go to our view controller again. Whoops, our view controller. And in here, we want to register um, our custom cell with its respective identifier. And we also want to DQ our custom cell as our custom cell. And then finally, we can call that configure function and pass in the item and data. Hit Command R to build and run. And you should see a table here and we have our buttons with the respective uh, titles on it. So the core of this video basically begins now. So a problem that we have now is this button that's in here in this reusable cell. So let me actually add a couple more cells to illustrate this example a little better. So let's say third, another, more. Um, but anyways, now that we have this cell and we have a button in it, the traditional way, of course, to interact with any button is we have it connected to this IB action. So once the user hits one of these buttons, we can simply call the action and we're done. The problem is, how are we going to distinguish which cell's button was tapped? Because the nature of the data, aka the title of each of these buttons, is held in the view controller. Whereas this class here that has this action is in a UI table view cell. So the point is this object is not aware of the state of the larger thing, which is this table with all these cells. So this is where the delegate pattern comes into play. Now the delegate pattern is essentially um, something where the view controller that controls the table itself, so this class, can assign a pointer of itself to this table view cell, and whenever this button is tapped, we can call a function on the delegate and delegate that call to the controller. So it's a little antiquated to explain, so we're just gonna implement it, and we'll talk about it as we implement. So we're gonna create a protocol here, and we're gonna call it my table view cell delegate. Now you'll notice this naming convention is the same as UI table view delegate because the idea and pattern is the same. We're gonna create a function in here and call it did tap button. Um, we did tap button with title. And then let's see, we also need to make this conform to any object. We're gonna do weak var delegate is of this type. And in this IB action, what we can do now is so we can say delegate, call that function we just defined, and now we pass in the title. So to pass in the title, of course, in this configure function, what we'll do is we should probably retain this title in a property. So let's create, whoops, let's create a private let title equal string, like so. Let's make it a var so we can assign it down here. And let's see, if we do a command B, we should be building. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go back to our view controller. And in here, what we can say is, before we return the cell, we can say cell.delegate, 
And notice the type is this my table view cell delegate that we created is self. Now notice this is similar to this, even though this is a data source. So what we need to do now is conform to that new protocol we created. And we're going to do that in an extension just to make things clean. So we're going to say extension of view controller. Oops, is my table view cell delegate. And the function we defined, if you start typing, it'll autocomplete, is did tap item, or sorry, did tap button with title. And for the sake of this video, let's just print out title. So just to review before we run, the idea is when the button gets clicked, we are going to basically delegate that call, and we're going to bubble it back up to the view controller so it can distinguish the contents of the uh, cell, like the specifics of it, as well as control any actions that need to be taken. Hence the term, of course, view controller. So let's hit command R to build and run. And let's also open up our console down here. Uh, pro tip, if you want to open and close this really fast, command shift Y. Uh, I often use a bunch of these shortcuts in videos and it's tough for folks to follow. Um, it's just muscle memory of several years of doing this, but Anyways, if we tap on any of these now, you can notice that the actual printed out statement here corresponds to what we tapped. And it's actually delegating through the IB action and then subsequently the delegate. And we have a question mark after the delegate because it can be optional. Then we call the function on it, passing in the title. It gets back to our view controller because our view controller has conformed and we print it out. And the reason that the cell knows to call the function in the view controller, let's say we had a second class that was also conforming, is because we said the cell's delegate will be self before we returned it. And that's basically it. That's the delegate pattern in a nutshell. And that's how you can put buttons and other things within a UI table view cell. And a really good example I like to give is imagine something like the Instagram app or the Facebook app where they just simply have very complicated cell layouts and they have things like the like button or comment button or share button in the cells. This is the pattern that they use to actually extract the action from the cell. So that being said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash that like button down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions, feedback. If you want to see any particular videos, subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you in the next one.